Greetings, everybody. Thetimix here with another AI War 2 patch update. Fairly late last night, the 1005 patch dropped, entitled Answering Your Top Requests. It's a big one. They've done a bunch of different things, which we're going to get to very shortly. Looking at the longer term development picture, in case anybody's not aware, cooperative multiplayer is coming in 2.0, which is expected to be early next year. Quite separate from that. In other words, you don't have to get this to get the multiplayer. There's expected to be also the first DLC expansion. Of course, you don't know anything about what's going to be in that, but that's just the down the road bit. Also, this is probably going to delay the next video in the beginner walkthrough until Thursday instead of coming up on Wednesday. Unfortunate, but kind of necessary under the circumstances. Okay, so what's in this new patch? Well, first of all, fleets got a big overhaul in a few different areas. One is the custom fleets are no longer overpowered. If we check our build tab, instead of having the nine different kinds, you can just build a custom fleet leader. You can build up to nine of them. You could actually build multiples of each of the previous ones before. And they're all the one type. Um, instead of being, you know, the cloaked and the fast and then the just generic one. They do not have advanced abilities compared to the normal ones you find in all fleets. Whether they are custom fleets or not. They all have five slots available. Now, because this is our current save... And I had some, like Strike Apity here with six. They get to keep the six. But if we go into the swap deal, and let's say we swapped one of these. Now, if we take a look at Danet, for example, it only has four current ship lines. And if we swap out, we can swap to any of the other sh uh, fleets. It's a little bit easier to do that now. And then you can see it only has the one empty slot. So it can only go up to five. And then you can see these other ones, the ones that are totally empty, also only have five available. So everybody just gets five slots. Now to compensate for that, it actually more than compensates for it, they actually have a new structure that you can capture, or not capture, but hack, known as the Fleet Capacity Extender. And I'll have a bit on that at the end of the video. It's going to be at the end because... You don't get those buildings in your current save games, only in new save games. So, frankly, I have no idea why anybody would want to do anything with their life to listen to me talk. But if you just want to see that part, check the description below. I'm going to put a timestamp in there so that you can go straight to that if you so choose. The Advanced Research Station also have changed. Let's look around and find one. Now, you can't hack, like, let's say you have parasites and you want to hack... An advanced research station with parasites. There was a, it wasn't a bug, but it was just sort of there was the only tricky way where you could merge lines and get twice the amount of parasites. You can't do that. That's what the fleet capacity ascender is now for. But if if you try to hack an advanced research station for something, a ship line that you already have in that fleet, it won't let you do it. But there is quite a bit different thing going on here, and you may notice there's five different types of ships. And when you hack it, you get to choose one of those. If you do the re-roll, then you get five different types of ships. They could be the same ones or different than what's there. But the bottom line is that uh, the advanced research stations, I think, became quite a bit more valuable. Because now you have definitely have a choice, a much wider choice, of what to complement your fleets with. And I'm a little bit concerned that the game... I mean, I, I trust what Arson is doing, I can count on one hand the number of developers that I have as much confidence as I do in them. But I'm a little bit concerned that with the variety of choice that they're moving in the direction of offering, it may upset gameplay balance some. But, like I said, uh, you still have to go with the fleets that you have available for, the, for most of your ships. But you do have a lot more choice now around the edges with the ARS, and then there were definitely people who felt that you really couldn't add your own personality or ships, you're sort of stuck with whatever you got, and I still think there was a significant amount of choice, but there's definitely more choice now with being able to double the amount of ships in a ship line via the hack of the fleet capacity extender, and also with being able to 
have many different choices from the ARS. So it may very well be working out for the best. Okay, and then fleet experience. It's, uh, it's virtually going away. And one of the main reasons is it was way too easy to grind your command station, and we didn't get into this strategy. But let's go back up here to like our economic command station. Now pretend X isn't here. And we just built an economic command station. And this actually would have been the optimal way to play before, and just let waves come in, build up enough defenses to deal with them, and it would gradually level up your non-turret defenses and your command station itself. So what would happen is you could eventually boost this command station up to Mark II, Mark III, etc., get a lot more energy out of it without spending the research cost. You're just doing it through experience, and then you would simply you know, build your choke point in front, and you've got much more energy in back with, effectively, the only thing you paid for it was the time to grind up that experience. And that's not what they intended with the experience idea. So that's no longer possible. The only fleets that gain experience and level up are your mobile fleets, and they don't gain much from it at all. Like the force field frigate can level up from it, and mainly your transport flagships can level up, but they don't get much. It, they did mention it's still in the plans to give those transport flagships perks in the future. There's sort of like a hero unit. And they're going to start small with that at some point down the road, but that's like a future plan. There's nothing in it now. So the fleet experience thing is just pretty much, it's virtually a non-entity. So if we pop in here, and there is one other thing you can do if you want to upgrade your defenses. If you select, you can also do this now. This is a new thing. Instead of the experience stuff being up here, it's got the big list of everything here, and then you can actually upgrade everything by one mark level by spending science directly. So you can target your science specifically to a system that you want to defend more. Or you want to get more economy out of, either way. So, I'm thinking that's probably, it's going to be interesting, but probably the military and the economic ones would benefit the most from that instead of your sort of run-of-the-mill logistics. So, I'm thinking that's probably going to be the way to go now. And each level that you increase it, it goes up higher. And I did test it out. You still do get, like, let's say we were to do this upgrade we paid for this and then we were to upgrade like the tractor arrays or the gravity generators separately in the tech screen you get the upgrade for them as well so it just it boosts everything to plus one a bar plus two if you do it twice or whatever up above what it normally is with escalating costs as you go up so that's interesting then they did a whole bunch of bug fixes. A couple notable ones were pursuit mode had gotten a little wonky because of the experimental pursuit option they'd put in. That was affecting even normal pursuit mode. They believe they've squashed that. Um, the area of effect bug that I'd mentioned before with them getting extra damage to extra targets, that's gone. And then look up here. The uh, instigator notification is permanently up here now, which is a really cool thing. It could be kind of fun to find them. But now we've just got it there. You right click and it takes you to the system. Dean in this case. So that's all good. And then hacking. A whole bunch of stuff got changed with hacking. Way too many to list individually. Basically, there's more of them that have an escalating cost. Where each one is 20% more than the cost of the previous one. A whole bunch of hacking changes. The general effect is that they want to make the hacking tighter. The metal game got tighter. You have less metal income in general, and also engineers are less effective at getting things built faster. They still function, but they don't accelerate things as much. And a lot of that was due to people had won. There have been several who have done it now on level 10 difficulty. And one of the things they were able to do is to march up to the home world, and in the words of one of the players, I think the first one that did it, uh, slap the home world defenses with wads of cash. They were just able to out attrition the defenses, which is not how it's intended to work. And so that was lowered down to keep that in line. 
There's new AI progress stuff. Notice that the AIP for the next mark level increase was 400. Now it is 430. And the AI progress for the next mark level is now based on the difficulty level. And so are a lot of the other thresholds. You can see up the top now our threat waves isn't quite unlocked yet. Also, our AI progress floor is much higher because it was increasing by 20% of any AI progress increase. Now it's increasing by 35%. So that is a really big difference, and it's going to make it a lot harder to keep your AI progress low. The sort of pro strategy of keeping your AI progress less than 100, less than that first mark level upgrade for the entire game, I think that's pretty much gone now. I really have a hard time seeing it happen with the floor increasing essentially 75% more than it did, up from 20 to 35%. So that's, a, that's really a major change for high-level play. And combining that with the metal and some of the other stuff, you can't grind the XP for your command stations. High-level play is going to be more difficult, which those types of changes are expected. But I'm going to be interested to see over the next couple of weeks how many people are still winning on difficulty 10. I'm feeling the number might go down. Maybe it won't. Maybe people will just continue to get better and they'll have to change other things. We will see. Major data centers, they were also changed. If we go look over here, it was 80 reduction and then 80 if it dies. Now it only, only gets 60 reduction and it goes down by 90 if it dies. So they're, they're not quite as beneficial as they were. And there's been talk, I don't believe they've done it yet, where things like the coprocessors and the regular data centers will reduce your AI progress less on the higher difficulties, which would put even more stress on that number for high-level play. The eyes, like the plasma eyes that we were running into the last time out, those do indeed now trigger on number of fleets, not just number of ships. So you've got to be even more careful with them than before. We'll have to investigate and see exactly how all of that's going to work. Guard posts are more troublesome. Generally, they just up the damage of most of them so that the standard defenses for the AI system will be a little bit more painful. AI targeting routines are better. They were, one of the things that people had mentioned they were doing is if you had a force field frigate or you had transport flagships, they were targeting them instead of unprotected fleet ships in the system. So combined with the more difficult economics of doing an attrition strategy, that also should help them wear down the player's numbers in certain situations. And then there's another startup option as well. If we go to the, uh, we'll look at the custom start first, just to show an example. If we did, say, uh, Macrophage, We've got all the hostility stuff, and then they have teams. Green, blue, and red. And if you assign minor factions to a team, the Macrophage qualifies, the Devourer, the Marauders, and then Nano Cost as well. If you put, like say you put multiple of them on ha, minor faction team blue, then they would all be friendly with each other and they would ally against everything else that isn't on team blue. We've actually got a new quick start that utilizes that. It's under Fun with Factions. The Galaxy Rises. Other factions have gotten tired of you in the AI fighting. They want to take the galaxy for themselves. Devour allies with Macrophages and Marauders to defeat you and the AI. With the Dark Spire thrown in as just a wild card. Fairly low level AIs, but with that many different things, that could get that could be very interesting. It could be a fun quick start to play. All right, let's look up that new structure that we can get after. Here we go. And I this is just, I did that Galaxy Rises quick start. Looked around, captured a planet real quick, and here it is. Fleet Capacity Extender. Hacking the structure doubles the ship cap for one of the fleet ship types belonging to the fleet that did the hacking. And if we go and take a look at the details on that, Cost 15, takes 2 minutes, and see it will increase by 20%. Then 
the next time you use it. So there's only so many times you're going to want to use that. But yeah, you can see it's powerful. And since it starts as 15, you could use it several times. And additionally, and this is true of some of the other hacks as well, the AL will launch a counterattack against you when it's completed. So just the whole hacking game in, in general has gotten more difficult, but also the fleet capacity extender has made things more flexible and given you another option for hacking. So believe it or not, that's just the major stuff. Like I said, this was a really big patch. I'm going to put a link down below to the Arson Wiki where they've got the latest patch notes for everything if you want to look over that in total detail. I'll be back as always with more patch news as the situation develops and the need arises. But that should about cover it on this one. Hope you're all enjoying the excellent game that AI War 2 is and is becoming. Thanks for watching, everybody.